stories, how you use them. T minus three, two, one, zero, and lift off. All right, I found my board, and guess what? You made a request, and not too long ago, we talked about all of the COVID stocks, like Zoom, like Peloton, that when COVID happened, whoopee, they went up, because we were buying Pelotons, paying the subscription fee, or we were on Zoom, doing all that, and Jeffrey Tubin, we're talking to you over at CNN, doing what you shouldn't have been doing on Zoom. Nonetheless, the Zoom stock was up, because people, independent people, companies were all using Zoom, and that was part of the COVID stock that after COVID, they came back down. Well, guess what? You were very alert and you said, hey, Tom, I thought Chewy was one of the COVID stocks, wasn't it? Or was it not? And I went and I dig a deep dive onto it and the answer is kind of, sorta. Well, let's find out what kind of, sorta means. Let's dive in. So there's some headlines recently, but they don't appear that bad. They actually appear pretty good. Chewy stock is having its best day ever amid signs pet adoptions are up again. May 29, 2024, we're sitting here on the 2nd of June. So guess what? From MarketWatch, very credible. This isn't hype, this is real. Then the Wall Street Journal, that's pretty real. Heard on the street, Chewy keeps pet owners coming back for more. They're talking about subscription and auto ship. We'll get to that in a minute. Then the Motley Fool, Bit of a pundit and also a place to get information on stocks. Is now the time to fetch some Chewy stock? Talking about dogs, fetch the stick. Well, all of this seems pretty good, doesn't it? Let's take a look at what's behind the scenes. First of all, consumer in lockdown, they wanted a pet. So this gets to the question about, hey, I thought Chewy was one of those COVID stocks. You know, wahoo, wahoo. Really? Well, kind of. But let's look at why it was kind of a COVID stock and what was going on here. This is information that came from our good friends at Charter that did this analysis. And we start with the share price in blue versus Google search for puppies for sale. 2019, 2020. What happened at the beginning of 2020? Lockdown. Canceled the NBA season all of that and boom searches go way up for puppies for sale why because we're locked down and we need a friend so away we go and take a look at this suddenly 2022 we can go back outside again play with our human friends and the stock price goes down and the search google searches for puppies for sale go down so guess what these were interlinked first you get a puppy the stock is down and then the stock goes up because you need food, a litter box, a comfy pillow, things to chew on that they're supposed to chew on rather than your shoes or things in your house, and a brush, shampoo, some flea stuff, all those things. So after you get the puppy, you need all the stuff from Chewy's, Chewy share price goes up because you're buying all the stuff for your man's best friend. Well, now then, go take a look. The subscription business was booming because here's what Chewy did. Wait a minute, you're not buying this one time, you're buying it many times. What if I could ship you this stuff right when you need it, assuming when you're gonna run out of it, whether it was food, special vitamins, whatever it is, what if I could just send it to you on an auto subscription auto ship when you need it? Well, guess what, they did that. Now take a look at this. Now, so they had gotten into the auto ship business 2018, 2017, all of a sudden they're like, hey, it works. Take a look here. This year, auto ship more, auto ship more, but look what happened in 2020, and then 2021, and then 2022, and then 2023. Look at that. The basic business got up to a, a point that was flat, and look at the auto ship. Guess what? Everybody got all those dogs, cats, and you know companions during COVID, which happened right here. Boom, there's the Google searches spiking right there in 2020. And guess what? There's the subscription business, Chewy Auto Ship. It was convenient for you and me, and it makes their, their sales go up on a predictable basis, and it's always shipping, so you're never out of it and saying, 
well, maybe I'll go to Costco and get my pet food. Nope, it's auto shipped and it's already here. So it keeps you with Chewy not going somewhere else. Then, the stock jumped recently after the good news on a Q1 report. So take a look at this. I'm only looking at this since the beginning of May, like May 1st to May 31st. We're looking at one month, meaning May. It's up 40%, 39.3% to be exact. And take a look. All of a sudden, they have a good earnings report, Q1 earnings report. Q1 ends at the end of March, but takes them a while to get it together. They announce the earnings report and some other good news. Bang. All of a sudden, it goes up to $22 and from $16. So that's a big 39% pop up and a nice little spike there up to a new level. But this is just part of the story. This is one month. Let's go back and take a look at the longer story. Let's go back several years pre-COVID. The stock ran up during the pandemic, but then it came back. Like throwing a tennis ball, the dog leaves, gets a tennis ball and comes back. That's a game and that's fun. This is not a game. This is your investment dollars, and let's see what happened. Oh boy. If you had invested $100 there, you would have lost 12 bucks. Because where it is now, it's at 22. Where was it here now? It was 34. Here's all of that COVID stuff. Well, wait a minute, Tom. You just told me, hang on, that was one month, the month of May. Let's go find it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hey, there it is, right there. See that little pop-up? That was a 30% pop-up from a very small number. So there you have it. Now you can see, so after it came back down, they had a pretty good first quarter, and it popped up a little bit, which was good news. But the longer story is, this isn't like Peloton, who went way up and then went down, and now we're waiting for Peloton, we're waiting for the coroner to come pick up Peloton, apparently, the corporate coroner, the body is just laying there somewhere. Um, this is all metaphorically speaking, is the opinion of the biz doc. The opinion of the biz doc is not necessarily the opinion of valuetainment as a whole. And as we come back here and we look at all this, you can see that there's a bigger story, that it was a pandemic led by, I'm sad and I'm inside, I need a puppy. And then the big spike goes down, but it levels out. So basically, Chewy is back where it started from, except it's a bigger company now, but they got to turn in the profits. Let's go take a look. <clears throat> so what's next? Continuity needed after the up and down of the pandemic. Now they're, they're able, they're getting a lot more of the auto ship business, which is good. So let's go take a look. The revenue is above 10 billion. They're a big company. And... They're a very successful subscription direct-to-consumer brand. They are a subscription. You're subscribing to dog food that shows up with an automatic billing every month, direct-to-consumer brand. Very, very, very valuable. So you could say they've turned dog food into the Spotify subscription, where they're just sending it to you every month and there's no reason to go elsewhere because you're subscribing. Then the auto ship has brought predictability to the revenue. Auto ship means you're just, you're automatically, you're just sending stuff and people need it because the dog or cat or whatever you got needs food. And here's the next supply of food. You get it, put it on the shelf, open a can a week, whatever you do, and there you have it. And over 75% of their business is now recurring. And it's driven all growth since 2021. In other words, Chewy has been flat on single purchase toys and everything else. If we're interpreting what the company has been putting out and the articles written by people like Barron's and the Wall Street Journal, which we see as highly credible sources, almost all the growth has been the auto ship business. And recently they announced a 500 million share buyback. Now, why is that gonna prop up the share price? Because what that means is that the profit per share of stock goes up a little bit so that they can keep the stock price inflated and they use excess profits to do that, called the sh uh, share buyback. In recent BizDoc case studies, I've shared that buybacks are loved by the market usually, because it usually props up the share of healthy companies, that is. So, <clears throat> and lastly, a one-time purchase provides a Merry Christmas season, like Black Friday. 
but a new puppy or kitten is for life because now you're on a recurring monthly subscription buying them stuff you need every month. That's what it is. Now, what about some lessons for you and me? Very interesting stuff there. Now we can see. Chewy needs to find more pet owners or sell more things to the same pet owners or needs more people to get more pets, which is what happened during COVID and they had that big run up. Lessons for us. Investors, whether it's the stock market or people investing in your business. Investors love subscriptions and recurring revenue because it's recurring, it's a subscription. You don't have to spend marketing to go sell it again. You sell it once and they're gonna be loyal for a time until they naturally break off. That's called churn rate. Is it a year, is it two years? When do they stop on Spotify and go back to Apple Music? That's called churn, when one goes to the other. Sometimes churn rates are really low, meaning people stay with it five, six years, and they don't really think about it until they, A, realize they're still getting auto billed for it on their credit card, or B, for some reason, they get tired of it. <clears throat> they decide they don't want it anymore, and they take their business elsewhere. But investors love it. Direct to consumer, Amazon Prime, there's a subscription. Oh, I can't give up my Amazon Prime. Why? I get free shipping, and I get certain other benefits. And media. Media has low churn rate usually, especially like cable television. You choose YouTube TV, you choose Hulu, you got your DVR, some of your shows, you're accustomed to what they're giving, and you're there. So then SaaS business, enterprise software. Once you start using things like uh, Microsoft um, uh, Office for the enterprise, and you get all those files up on um, OneDrive, or you're using um, Salesforce and you have all your customers in there, it's usually very low churn rate and enterprise software recurring. And then we go back to something we talked about in a recent case study, season cyclical versus spikes. It turned out Peloton was not seasonal cyclical. It was just a spike related to COVID that didn't repeat. Seasonal repeats, back to school. Black Friday, those things repeat in seasons and cycles that are somewhat predictable. Certain fashion, you know, warm shoes, coats, jackets, seasonal. And if you love Patagonia, you tend to be loyal to the brand. So that's seasonal cyclical versus spikes. Zoom had a spike. Peloton has a spike. Those spikes have proven not to be enduring. And lastly, the change may not go on forever. And that is what Chewy experience. The good news is they've really bolstered their subscription business. The bad news is the spike of people adopting pets appears to have come and gone. And so now, as long as those, all those pets have a normal you know, life and don't uh, go walking off near um, people like Christy Nome, then those pets are going to be with us for a nice long time. So when you have season cyclical versus spikes, if you're gonna invest, get it while you can, but it is easy to get bit when the party's over and it drops back down. And those are just some of the lessons for us. So that is the Chewy story. I thought it was pretty interesting. And thank you for the question because it was a COVID stock, but it was a little bit different story. So certainly we don't lump it in with Zoom and Peloton. Nonetheless, it's there. If you like that case study from your friend the BizDoc, maybe you'll like one of these from the BizDoc archive. Click them and enjoy. As I like to say, I'm Tom Ellsworth, the BizDoc, and I hope I left you better than I found you.